Hi guys! After the assembly videos of the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro, I think it's time to make a quick video comparing the two printers. Both look almost the same, so what's different? One difference that stands out right away is the print surface. On the standard Ender 3 and for the early versions, you get a glued surface on the heat bed. For the recent ones, you get the same surface but not glued on the bed and a few clamps to secure it on the heat bed. The Pro is equipped with a magnetic print surface and this one is better for two reasons. The first is because it's much easier to remove the print when finished. You don't need to force the bed or use spatulas to take the print out. When you do that, you will stress the bed and mess with the bed leveling and the Y-axis wheels. That's why I end up using painter's tape. The second is that you don't need to use paper clamps and that will allow you to use the entire bed size. The announced print area on both models is 220mm by 220mm. That can be seen on the stickers, but the heat bed size is actually larger. The bed size is 235mm by 235mm, and you can mechanically reach that length. If you use the clamps to secure the print surface on the standard version, you need to take these into account to prevent the nozzle to crash onto them. The bad thing with the magnetic surface is just the max temperature allowed. If you need to use temperatures higher than 80 degrees C on the bed, the magnetic properties will eventually be lost. Another difference is the location of the memory card slot and the USB connector. On the standard Ender 3, they are on the bottom side. On the Ender 3 Pro, they are located on the top side, and the card is inserted upside down. This is because of the way they installed the board inside. On the Ender 3, you can access the board from the top side. while on the Pro, you access the board from the bottom side. It's actually easier to access the board on the standard Ender 3, but with the Pro, you get the cooling fan underneath, which prevents dirt and filament debris from getting in. On the Pro, I have the board with the version 1.1.3, but there are no major changes from the 1.1.2 of the standard Ender 3. Other difference is the Y-axis profile. The standard Ender 3 uses a 20 by 40 profile while the Pro uses a 40 by 40 profile. A wider profile means more stability for the Y-axis carriage. Also on the frame, I noticed that the standard has only two screws securing the cross beam, while the Pro has four screws securing the cross beam. The power supply on the Pro version is different from the standard Ender 3. You can actually see the difference in size from my printers. The standard Ender's power supply is bigger in size when compared with the Pro. The standard Ender 3 uses a 24 volt 15 amp power supply. The Pro uses a 24 volt 14.6 amp power supply, but this one is a Meanwell which is a superior power supply. I compared the time that both take to heat up the bed up to 60 degrees C and the Pro reached the set temperature a few seconds faster. While printing, both were able to maintain the temperature stable the same way. Both use the same yellow XT60 connector for the main power at the back side. This connector can handle the demanded current, but many users had issues with it. I don't have any issues so far with this connector on both printers, but this is something I recommend everyone to keep an eye on and fix if needed. 
Both models have the same hot-end configuration and also the same cooling capability. They also have the same extruder too. I was hoping that the Pro would have the extruder position fixed so that the filament would not touch the lead screw, but it's the same. The firmware is also different between both printers. On the standard Ender 3, we don't have many options to play with, but most important, you don't have the option to adjust acceleration, jerk and step values. On the Pro, you have all these options so you can adjust acceleration, jerk and step values. However, the Pro, same as the standard Ender 3, you don't have the thermal protection enabled so you are forced to flash the firmware to have the thermal protection feature. In terms of print quality, I haven't noticed any difference. Both print exactly the same and the print results are exactly the same. So, as far as I can see, the Pro does not bring any improvements to the print quality. The price difference between the two is currently around $100, so I wonder if this price difference is worth it. What do you guys think about this? That's it you guys, thanks for watching. As always, keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. If you like our work and wish to help, you can with PayPal and Patreon. We will see you guys next time, bye!